there is lot of variety in the living organisms around us what are the main groups of living organisms human beings plants animals as well as the microscopic organisms so i suppose talking about trees there is lot large variety in the trees some trees live for thousands of years and grow up to a great height whereas some trees are of very short height same way in human beings also your height is different from your friend's height the length of your hands and legs are different from those of your friends so usually there must be some fundamental classification some basis for to classify all these organisms into groups so there must be some specific features which we must consider to classify every organism into groups and subgroups so what is biodiversity the variety of living organisms found in the geographical area the variety of living organisms found in a particular area is called diverse biodiversity of that area so there is lot of variety of organisms in a particular area is known as the biodiversity of that area so amazon forests are regarded as the biggest biodiversity in the world forest of amazon are very big then what is the need for classification of these organisms necessary for easier study of living beings because there is lot of variety in living each organism so classification is necessary for easier study of these organisms there is lot of variety around us but we do not have so much time to study about everything around us life is busy nowadays right so there must be some proper classification so that it would be very easy to study them without classification it would be difficult to study billions of organisms on the earth so if there is no proper base of classification it would be difficult to study the characteristics of each and every organism because in each organism there are many species and like that there are millions of species millions of organisms to classify all these to make the study easier need of some basis of classification so what was considered as the basis of classification so aristotle the first classification was given by aristotle aristotle classified organisms only in two types based on whether they live on the land whether they live on the water so classification based on these two characteristics was very easy but not very proper and very distinguishing right very very it was not very particular very specific features were not there so this was not widely accepted later came some more modifications and some other basis of classifications so let's see some examples of scientific basis of classifications so the first basis was organization of the nucleus so as you know every organism is made up of group of cells and the cell has nucleus a small organelle cell organelle is nucleus so some organisms have cell with nucleus some organisms have cell without nucleus so on the organization of nucleus organisms were of two types prokaryotes and eukaryotes so nucleus may or may not be organized in an organism so in prokaryotes when nucleus is not organized that is nuclear material or nuclear membrane bond so the nuclear membrane is not membrane bound so the organism is called prokaryote so in prokaryote of organism nucleus is not organized in a particular way and nuclear material is not covered by a nuclear membrane then the organism is known as prokaryote so what is eukaryote in a eukaryote the nucleus is organized nuclear membrane or mem nuclear material is membrane bound then the organism is known as prokaryotes then one more basis of classification was number of cells since cell is known as the basic structural and functional unit of an organism based on the number of cells organisms were classified into unicellular or multicellular unicellular means having single cell multicellular means having many cells so organisms may have single or many cells single cell unicellular many cells organisms are known as multicellular 
So next on the based on the mode of nutrition, that means how they can prepare the food and how they intake the food. On that basis also organisms were classified into two types, autotrophs and heterotrophs. So autotrophs means those organisms which can prepare their own food. So which organisms can prepare their own food? Only plants. Plants in the daytime, the presence of sunlight, water and in the presence of sunlight, they make their own food. They take minerals and water from the soil and they prepare their own food. And they take carbon dioxide and oxygen from the air also during the method of preparation of food, photosynthetic activity, right? So autos autotrophs make their own food in the presence of sunlight, air and water. Then what are heterotrophs? Heterotrophs are organisms who cannot prepare their own food. They depend on other organisms for their food, like animals. Animals depend on plants for their food. And we human beings depend on plants as well as animals for food. So that is the basic difference between autotroph and heterotroph. So then moving on to the level of organization. So cells are organized in the body. The body is made up of cells. Cells is considered as the basic structural and functional unit of any organism. So in multicellular organisms, the cells, there can be different levels of organization. So when a cell is responsible, so gradually cell only develops into tissues. Tissues develop into organs and these organs carry out all the life processes, respiration, excretion transportation etc. So when cell is responsible for all these life processes, it is known as the cellular level of organization. And when some cells group together to form a tissue, it is known as the tissue level of organization. And these tissues perform specific functions. So when some cells group together to perform specific functions, then they are known as tissues. Cells group together to perform specific functions known as tissues. Then when the organization is at this level, it is known as tissue level of organization. Then when tissues group together to form some organs, it is known as the organ level of organization. So organs means heart, kidney, any vital organs, brain, etc. So organ system level of organization is seen in complex organisms like human beings, some animals, animals which are made up of organs like brain, heart, liver, kidneys, etc. So classification and evolution. Evolution was first proposed by Charles Darwin. It was believed that our ancestors were evolved many many billion years ago. So all life forms were evolved from a common ancestor. Sometimes we believe that the human beings have evolved from monkey and the chimpanzee, right? So all the life forms have evolved from a common ancestor. Ancestor is our old great grandfather type of people. So scientists prove that life began on earth in the form of simple life forms. Scientists have proved that earlier when life was there, it was very simple life form. Then complex life forms evolved from them. See, if considering human beings, earlier they used to look like monkeys and chimpanzees. Those that were simple things. Later, body became complex, organs developed, cells developed, tissues developed, then it became complex. So, then complex forms evolved from simple forms. So, simple organisms are considered as the primitive level or the lower level of organisms. So, in the classification, if we say simple organisms means primitive level or the lower level of organisms. And if we are saying advanced level or complex level of organisms or secondary level of organisms those are complex organisms so complex organisms are considered as advanced or secondary level and prime primitive organisms are the lower level so complex organisms are advanced or the upper level of organisms next hierarchy of classification hierarchy means nothing but ranking from the top to the low or classification from the top to the low so how is this classified the organisms are classified into groups this group classification was done by robert whittaker along with few other scientists in the year 1959 so robert whittaker classified the organisms into five kingdoms so these groups are formed 
on the basis of cell structure, how the cells are molded and source of the nutrition, how they make their food or intake their food, and body organization, how the cells and tissues are organized. Based on all these things, Robert Whittaker classified into five kingdoms or groups. So these five kingdoms are Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae, and Animalia. Further, Monera was divided into two groups, Archaebacteria and Eubacteria, by the scientist named Goose. So, these were the main five kingdoms. These five kingdoms were again subclassified, like they were classified into phylums or divisions. Phylum is for animals and division is for plants. And class, order, family, genus and species. Species is the different types of organisms. So these were the main five groups or the five kingdoms and these five kingdoms will again be further classified depending on these characteristics. So first let's see about Monera. Monera are usually prokaryotic organisms. Then they may or may not have cell walls. Then they may be, the mode of nutrition can be either autotrophic or heterotrophic both. And sometimes they may have cell walls or they may not have cell walls. Then these are only unicellular organisms like bacteria. The examples are bacteria, blue green algae. Blue green algae, blue -green algae are also known as cyanobacteria as well as mycoplasma also. So the structure looks somewhat like this. The bacteria, this is also an example of bacteria. So they have some resting spores, they have heterocyst and the body is made up of many spores like structures and they may have cell walls or they may not have cell walls like that. So this is about Monera. Monera are prokaryotes, unicellular, either autotrophic or heterotrophic and they may or may not have cell walls. And examples are blue green algae.